Hey guys, what's up? It's Erin here from The Petite Planner and today I have a fun Procreate lettering tutorial plus some tips. So if you want to know some Procreate tips and gestures that you can use within the app, um, keep watching because I will put them into play here as we create this so that you can pick up on them and actually put them into use. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this layer here that I have created. Um, we'll be recreating this. So I'm just going to turn it off and we're going to start a new one. So I'm going to hit a new layer. Um, I have changed my background color. So to change your background color, you're going to click on it on background and then you can just move this around or move your colors around depending on what you have for your palette. So I went with a really light, very pale blue. So now on my new layer, again, disregarding this one, this is just the one that we are copying off of. So starting a new layer, I'm going to layer two, I'm going to go to black, and then I'm going to go to airbrushes and hard airbrush. And my size is set to, let's do about 25. So here's a tip. If you didn't know how to do this already, you can create quick shapes within Procreate. So I'm going to draw a square around the outside. So that's pretty rough looking. It's not perfect, but if I set my finger on it, it will create a perfect square. Now, just to show you the difference, I can also do it this way. And if I hold my finger here, it still creates that shape, right? And I can twist and turn it. If I put my finger on it, it's going to create a perfect square that is completely level. But if I do this and I lift my pen, I can go to edit shape. And from here I can choose square or rectangle. Um, polyline would allow you to move each of these on its own, but we're not gonna want that. So now I'm just gonna click out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit, you use two fingers to undo. And that brings me back to the shape that I initially created, two shapes or two fingers again. So that was before it adjusted to create a square and two again, and it's gone. Now, if I wanna redo that, if I decide that I want it back, I can use three fingers, touch the screen, and it's back. So two fingers to make it go away. So now what I wanna do is I want to make this outside edge completely white. So I'm going to go up to white and my color picker, make sure that I'm on this layer that has the black square, and I'm going to drag my color down to go around. So there's another tip, if you didn't know, you can drag and drop color into areas. Um, if I would have drag, drug the white here, it would have just stayed inside this square. So from here, what we wanna do is we want to create a new layer and we want to drag that layer underneath this square frame we just made. So to do that, I'm just going to take my pen, hold it down and then move it under, just like that. So from here, I'm going to grab some uh, brushes that I have purchased on Creative Market. These are the Inky Ethereal. I probably pronouncing that so terribly wrong. I will leave the link in the description, but I purchased these from Creative Market and they come with a dynamic set and a stamp set. So I'm gonna start with the stamp set here and there are tons and tons of these. I don't know how many came in the pack, but there are a lot. So I'm gonna start with this and then I'm gonna go up into purple colors and then adjust my size over here. So I don't know, like that. That's pretty small, so I'll undo it. So I wanna make it bigger here, here. And we're just gonna kinda of place these all over. We're not gonna to worry too much about any of this. So obviously if you're trying to follow along and you don't have these yet and you're not going to purchase them, which is okay, you don't have to. Um, you could use something like the watercolor brush and make different watercolor marks. I believe that under watercolor, no, that's purchased, under painting maybe. I think this water brush comes standard with Procreate. So I'm gonna go back to my stamps here. Um, these are awesome for creating backgrounds and stuff. So if that is something that you're into and you really like lettering, this is, it's really fun to do this and have these on hand. So now I'm gonna go to the dynamic set here and grab one of these and go up to a light purple. And with these, unlike a stamp, it's not just a dot. So you just kind of drag your pen and that's really big. So we're gonna turn it down a notch and 
just kind of fill in some of this space here. Maybe go a little darker. After this, we're going to liquefy uh, these colors together and it really gives it that uh, mixed, kind of almost watery color effect. So I'm just going in with different purples here. Just trying to fill space where the blue is. Some of it will probably show through, but I want to cover a lot of it. And maybe a couple, like this stamp with like this. Yeah. Okay, so I have all of my inky stamps laid out. So now what we're going to do is making sure we're on this layer that is underneath our frame we are going to learn how to kind of distort layers. So one fun way to do this is to go up here to this little wand tool. Nope, oh yes, the wand tool. And then hit liquify. So now down here you have all these different options of how you can make this layer kind of liquify so it distorts them. So you have push, twirl right, twirl left, pinch, expand, crystals, edge. Um, reconstruct is if you need to fix something that you distorted but you don't wanna undo everything. So I'm gonna start with the expand one. I like this one. And all you have to do with this is really just touch and hold. You can also move it. Um, I'm gonna get into some moving here in a little bit, but not with this one. So I'm just gonna kinda do what feels right. And then I'm gonna go to twirl left. And here you can just kind of start to do this. And you could hold it still and it will create a spiral or you can just move it around and it'll slowly start to twirl what's around it. So now I'm gonna add some twirl right and then we can do push and it'll kind of push things around. Play with it however you want. I love these liquify settings. I think they're so cool. They remind me of, um, what's that called? Acrylic pouring. So something like that, and maybe a pinch. Ooh. So I'll go to the reconstruct if I do that, then see it kind of brings it back. So maybe here I'll just twirl this and then push some of this color over. All right, so I think that's good for that layer. So this is, again, this is our background for our lettering. So the next thing that I did on my other one was I added some different shimmers to it. So shimmers are under, um, let's see, luminance. So you have glimmer. And I started mine with white. And I always create a new layer. This is still below the frame because we don't want any of it showing through on the edges. Now I want to show you how you can change your brushes to make them work better for you. So when I very first grabbed this brush, the spacing was way down here. And I'll show you what this looks like. So I have mine set pretty high at 50, ooh, 58. But it's really close together, like it's really heavy. So if we undo that, we can go in and we can adjust this. So the spacing here, you can see that it gets super like packed tight and then you can fade it way out. So I've got mine up to 94.1. We'll see how that looks. I like that a lot better. And so I'm just gonna kind of drag these and put them wherever. And I might move my size down a little. And what, as you get smaller, they do get a little closer together. So you just have to be really, make small movements. And then I did also pick up a brighter purple to do the same thing and just did a couple little dots around. Okay, so something like that. So that's our background and that is completely done. So now what we wanna do is we want to do our lettering. So again, what we're gonna do is now this time we're gonna click on our frame layer and we can group all of these together. So this is another trick if you didn't know how to do this. What we're gonna do is we are going to select one of these layers. So we're gonna group all of our background layers together. So we're gonna go this, 
and this. So I'm sliding right on all the layers that I want to group, and then I can just hit group right here. And then I can click this arrow and it puts it all in one neat little space and you can rename it. So if you click, there's a rename and you could do background. All right, so now I want to create a new layer up above and this I'm gonna go with white and I'm going to be picking up a brush pen that I also bought um, on Creative Market. I loved this set, I think it's called the Colorado set. Again, I'll link it down below. I love the brushes that came in this set. This is probably my very favorite brush to use when I'm doing lettering. So I'm gonna turn this down to about probably 31, we'll try it like that. And I'm just gonna write the word love So there I've written the word love in calligraphy. Um, the big thing is, is that you can't really distinguish it real well against the background. It kind of all just blurs together. I don't know if it's showing the same on screen, but you kind of want to add some uh, contrast to these. So this is another trick to do. So we can duplicate this layer. So we're gonna slide this over and then we'll hit duplicate. So now you have two of the exact same thing select the bottom one and what we can do is we can recolor this layer to black and we're going to create this kind of a black glow against the background so here click on the layer and hit select this is the easiest way to just rec or recolor one entire layer go up here select your color so i'm going with black click it again and click fill layer so now you can see that the top layer is white and the bottom layer is black so now with the bottom layer, the black layer selected, we're going to do a Gaussian blur, which is under the little wand. So hit Gaussian blur. And now we're just gonna do a very slight amount just till we kind of see it start to come out around the edges, like right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color over all this to give to make it even darker. So I'm going to hit come back to my layers. I'm going to go to this bottom layer, hit select again. So when we hit select, it means that that's the only thing you can color on. So watch. I think I've still got this uh, Colorado brush selected, but if I try to color up here, nothing is going to happen. The only time it's going to show up is over what is selected, which is that black blurred letter. So here I'm just going to color over, making sure I get all of it. And this is going to just deepen up that shadow. And you can do this more than once. So we can go out of this and then you could hit select and then color again and it would even deepen it some more. So now it has a little bit of contrast. The other option is to take this and duplicate it again. And if you like this deeper look better, you can come up here and you can combine these two layers. So there are two different ways to combine layers. There actually are probably more than that. But if we click on the top black one, so we have the um, one black layer of love and then the second black layer, but we want to combine them for just one. So one is to click on it and click merge down. So now those layers have moved into one, but they still have that deeper effect. So I'm gonna undo that and I'll show you the other way. The other way is a gesture. So a gesture is just a finger movement. Um, it's kind of like shortcuts. So you can take and you can just pinch these two together with your fingers and then it will combine those layers together as well. So the last thing we want to do is we want to create a little bit of a drop shadow as well. Drop shadows just help add a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to come up to my white layer again. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to drag one of these down all the way below. So below all the letters, all the love layers. Um, and if you want to name these, you can. So this could be like your main text. This could be your glow and this would be your drop shadow. So we're gonna recolor this layer the same way we did the other one. So we're gonna hit select, and I already have black selected, so now I can click it again 
click fill layer. Now that layer is black again. And now we're going to move it. So to move anything in Procreate, you're gonna hit this little thing. Um, typically when I'm moving shapes or letters, I have the magnetics uh, selected down here because then it doesn't distort what I've done. Um, so from here, we can just take and drag this and you can see now it's starting to come out, right? So I'm gonna get it pretty lined up. So I'm dragging it down and to the left. And another thing you can do is you can use your pen to tap in the direction you want something to move. So if you want something to move down and to the left, you tap here. Um, say if I've gone too far, or I wanna come back this way, I can tap this way or this way. And this will just move it in very small increments so that you're not having to worry about all of that. So now I've got it pretty lined up. Um, now what I want to do is I want to blur this layer a little bit as well, but this time we're going to do the motion blur. So that's again under the wand and then on motion blur, we can take and we can just drag it in the direction we want. So because this shadow is coming this way, we want to make sure that we drag it this way. So up and to the right, just a little. If you go too much, it's going to just blow it out. So you're only going a little bit. So mine's at about uh, 19%. So now without grouping all these layers together, our love is off center. We want to center it. So without grouping them all together so that later if we wanted to change them, we could, we can move all three at once. So we're going to do the same way we selected to make a group. So I have this bottom layer selected. So my drop shadow and then my glow and then my, oops, and then my glow and then my main lettering. Again, sliding them all to the right. So they're all three selected. And now if I hit move, it will move all three of them at the same time. And that's pretty centered. So that is the completion. I want to show you one more tip before we close out here. If you wanted to recolor this so you didn't end up loving your color scheme, we can go back down here into our background, drop this down, go to this inky layer that we created. You can come up here to the wand. You can first go to, uh, you can start with color balance. That's usually what I do. And this is going to give you your highlights, midtones, and shadows. So you can start changing some of those up to get what you want. So if you wanted more of blue or say you want more pink, um, so here, just kind of play around with those and then go to your midtones and do the same thing. So if this one you want more purpley, and then you can pick here, we want to keep it pretty pink, but not too pink. And then the shadows, we're just gonna move it over just a little. And then really, Go here, and maybe add some blue. Okay, so there is one way to change that coloring. You could also now go into your hue saturation, saturation and brightness and change the overall hue. So you could give this a totally different look depending on what you're going for, um, as well as the saturation. So you can turn the satur saturation way down and your brightness if you wanna go very dark um, or if you want to go very bright. And then if you decide that you want it to be more pastel, you can go to this layer. And this is this little N represents how you want your layer to be uh, displayed. So you can set it to different blend modes here, but for now we're just gonna mess with the opacity and we could bring it down so that it had more of a pastel look to it. So I hope that helped you out. I have more tips and tricks for you on Procreate in the future. If you want to see anything specific, please let me know in the comments below. I love reading guys' comments, even if I don't always get back to all of them. I want to thank you guys so much. I just recently hit 20,000 subscribers and it means the world to me. So thank you for your continued support and watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day.